Hello everyone, my name is Brecht van der Voort and I will present Robustness against Read Committed for Transaction Templates. This is joint work with Bas Ketsman, Christoph Koch and Frank Neven. Before diving into the details of our work, I will first give a general overview. A database management system usually offers multiple isolation levels to choose from, such as Read Committed, Snapshot Isolation or Serializability. Lower isolation levels, such as Read Committed, trade in consistency guarantees for increased throughput. This brings us to the robustness problem, which can be phrased as follows. Can a given workload be safely executed under a lower isolation level? Or, in other words, is every possible concurrent execution of the workload serializable? This is an interesting property, as it allows to select the lower isolation level to benefit from the increased throughput without giving up consistency guarantees. Clearly, robustness analysis requires upfront knowledge of the workload at hand, and we will therefore consider all possible workloads that can be defined using a fixed, finite set of transaction templates, which I will discuss in more detail later on. One important assumption for this model is that selection predicates are based on attributes that cannot change. The main contributions of our work are as follows. We provide an algorithm that, given a set of transaction templates, decides robustness against read committed. In practice, however, it might happen that workloads are not robust against read committed. In that case, we propose a code modification technique that will slightly change the transaction templates to obtain robustness, without altering the semantics. Lastly, we verify through experiments that our approach is effectively able to detect more workloads as robust against read committed when compared to related work, and that selecting read committed for robust workloads indeed results in an improved transaction throughput. A transaction template is essentially a sequence of operations over typed variables. As an example, you can see two transaction templates based on the small bank benchmark, which models a banking application. If we look, for example, at the deposit checking template on the right, we see that the first operation is a read operation on the account relation, accessing the attributes name and customer ID. The second operation of deposit checking is an atomic update, which first reads the customer ID and balance attributes of a checking account, after which the balance is overwritten by a new value. By assigning database tuples to these variables, we can now construct all kinds of different workloads. In the schedule below, for example, the workload consists of three transactions, where transaction T1 is based on the write check template, and both T2 and T3 are based on the deposit checking template. Notice in particular that T1 and T2 operate over the same account, but T3 operates over a different account. For the robustness analysis, it is of course important to consider all possible schedules over all possible workloads that can be derived from these templates. In our definition of conflicting operations, we take into account the attributes that are accessed. That is, two operations are conflicting if they both access a common attribute of the same tuple, and at least one of them overrides this attribute. As an example, let's reconsider the schedule from the previous slide. The two highlighted operations are conflicting and therefore lead to a dependency from T1 to T2 in the corresponding conflict graph on the right. It is well known that the schedule is now conflict serializable even only if the conflict graph is acyclic. The reason that we analyze conflicts on the level of attributes is that this allows us to do a more fine-grained robustness analysis. Consider for example these two templates based on the TPCC benchmark and look in particular at the two highlighted update operations accessing the district relation. The operation on the left-hand side updates an attribute that is not observed by the operation on the right-hand side and the other way around. Therefore, these two operations will never lead to conflicts on the level of attributes, and it even turns out that these two templates are now robust against read committed. For our definition of read committed, we assume a multi-version database, implying that read operations can observe older ver versions of a tuple. A schedule is allowed under read committed if it exhibits no dirty writes, and every read operation observes the most recently committed version, thereby ignoring possibly uncommitted changes. Read committed is the default isolation level in some major database implementations, including Postgres. But of course, it is important to realize that read committed does not necessarily guarantee conflict serializability. I will now discuss the robustness problem and our results in more detail. Given a set of transaction templates, there are two possible cases. Either each possible schedule allowed under read committed is conflict serializable, thereby implying that this set is robust, which is the case on the right, or we can construct at least one schedule that is allowed under read committed but not conflict serializable, as is the case on the left. Robustness is not something new, 
as it has been studied extensively before. Up until now, this research mostly focused on higher isolation levels, such as snapshot isolation, and on sufficient condition. Earlier work on robustness against read committed by Alomari and Fichete only provided the sufficient condition that is not a necessary one. In our earlier work, we already characterized robustness against read committed for a log-based version in single version databases, which is different from the read committed over multi-version databases that we consider here. The first main contribution of our work is an algorithm deciding robustness against read committed for a given set of transaction templates. Note that the construction of such an algorithm is non-trivial, as the analysis requires considering all schedules over all possible sets of transactions that can be constructed from the given set of templates. The main insight leading to this algorithm are that if a workload is not robust against read committed, then there is a bound on the number of tuples needed to construct a counterexample, and this counterexample furthermore has a specific form, which we call multi-version split schedules. The general idea is as follows. The first transaction T1 is split in two parts, and the remaining transactions are placed in between in a serial fashion. Furthermore, there should be a dependency from each transaction to the next, as indicated by the arrows in the figure. We applied our algorithm on both a small bank benchmark and a benchmark based on TPCC, and compared it to the earlier sufficient condition by Alamari and Fichieti. The different rows represent the different settings that we considered for each benchmark, where each setting included more and more features such as atomic updates and conflict analysis on the level of attributes. The column on the left presents the subsets detected by our algorithm, whereas the column on the right presents the subsets detected by the sufficient condition by Alomari and Fichieti. Due to time constraints, I will not go into the details, but the general conclusion is that adding features results in larger robust subsets, and that our approach detects more and larger robust subsets when compared to the earlier sufficient condition. To verify whether robustness indeed leads to an increased transaction throughput, we ran a robust subset of the small bank benchmark on a Postgres database, which implements three different isolation levels. We populated the database with 18,000 bank accounts and selected a small subset to act as a hotspot. In these figures, we see that read committed, which is the leftmost bar, results in a significantly higher transaction throughput when contention increases due to a smaller hotspot or increased hotspot probability. When robustness is not guaranteed, we furthermore provide a code modification technique that allows to obtain robustness anyway. The idea is to modify certain transaction templates without changing any of the database internals. To this end, we will promote some read operations to atomic updates that not only read the value, but also write back this value. As an example, consider the small bank benchmark again. Our analysis shows that it is sufficient to promote all read operations that access a saving or checking account. So, for example, the write check template on the left is changed by promoting the two highlighted read operations to atomic updates that write back the observed balance. Earlier work by Alomari and Fichetti presented another code modification technique that relies on adding a fresh tuple to the database for each bank account in the database. Templates then need to write to this tuple before accessing the corresponding account. An important thing to note here is that, since we modified the templates for read committed, outperforming the higher isolation levels is no longer guaranteed. In these figures, the throughput for our promotion technique is indicated by the light blue bar. The brown bar in the middle represents the throughput for the related approach by Alomari and Fichetti. The dark blue bars represent the throughput for read committed over the original templates as a baseline, for which serializability is not guaranteed. In these figures, we see that when contention increases, our promotion technique still outperforms both the higher isolation levels as well as the approach by Alomari and Fichetti. When analyzing promotion for the benchmark based on TPCC, we noticed that the attribute level analysis requires fewer read operations to be promoted. In the figure, the second bar represents the attribute level analysis and the third bar represents the tuple level analysis. We can see that the promotion on the level of attributes significantly outperforms the analysis on the level of tuples. To conclude, we presented techniques to detect and obtain robustness against read committed, and we verified that these indeed lead to improved robustness detection and transaction throughput. Possible directions for future work include building more features into transaction templates. At ICDT 2022, we will present the addition of foreign key constraints. Another option is to consider a setting where each transaction can be assigned a different isolation level instead of assigning the same isolation level to all transactions. Thank you for your attention.